Hi friends, welcome back to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel and today we are um, starting our peppers and basil. I should have done this when I did my tomatoes. If you missed that video, we planted a huge variety of tomatoes and we're doing the same thing with peppers today, but <clears throat> we were pressed for time then, so it's just a week later, not a big deal. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys what variety we're growing today. So to get started today, I just started with uh, my little, I don't know, 50 cell trays. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, 50 cell trays that I bought from Johnny Seed, not sponsored, bought it with my own money. Um, and they're, they're doing really well. I have actually my very first tomato sprouts popping up. I will show those to you at the end of the video. Leaves aren't out yet, but you can see the um, little seeds breaking the surface of the soil. And very similarly, I use, for all things, my favorite tool for planting seeds is the fat end of the chopstick, and when I'm starting them inside anyway. And it allows me to just do a little dab um, and not go too deep because peppers and basil, you plant fairly shallow. So I'm gonna get all my little dabs started. I'm doing probably two in each cell, at least two basils in each cell. And we'll see how far our peppers go because some of my seeds are I used last year. And then we'll just sprinkle some soil back on the surface and we'll be off to the races. Okay, so I think we're gonna start with our basil and I have from MI Gardener, the Genovese basil, and then also from Greenstalk sent us just a packet of what they call sweet basil. I'm sure it's a variety, but I wanna grow a lot of this this year um, because I'm getting kinda low on everything that I have preserved. If you've never seen basil seeds, that's a little basil seed, teeny tiny. So we're gonna just drop a couple in. And um, not only for me, but my daughter-in-law is starting her very first big garden. Last year for her birthday, we set her up a garden and she mostly grew herbs in it. And this year, She's doing her first go at a vegetable garden. Um, so some of the tomatoes I'm growing are for her and this basil and the peppers I'm starting today will help seed her garden and get it started. Um, and I said it, she said, I'm just gonna start small, uh, not go overboard. I said, yeah, just enough to get you addicted to growing your own food. Yeah. And hopefully, I think that that's my biggest recommendation for anyone just starting out. Start small where it's not overwhelming and you can stay on top of your weeds and you can learn and like see the pest damage, you know, if pests start making their way in. And then it, um, when it comes time to expand, you've got some, you have some feeling of success under your belt and so that is what she's gonna be doing. So I did, uh, actually, I wasn't supposed to do that. I am so bad about talking to you guys and planting at the same time. Well, we did two whole rows of Genovese basil. So I only set aside two rows of basil. So that is that. I'm just gonna cover those back up. And I did pre-moisten the soil before I started and the packets that look kind of damp, are not damp, but dry. Um, when I pre-moistened the soil, watered it in, it uh, really sank down. So I just topped those trays off, or those little cells. So then all, both of these things, very similarly to tomatoes, need heat to germinate well. So we'll be putting these in our grow tent with the humidity dome on top. 
And let me tell you something, just like growing tomatoes, I want to share with you like some of my favorite growing tips because if you're in a place where you're maybe a little bit ahead of me or you've got your garden journal out and you're wanting to take some notes, um, I know not everybody believes in it, but I have done an experiment, at least in my garden, and proven it works. Uh, to get a bigger pepper harvest, research, or maybe I can have Todd throw a link in here about topping your peppers. And that is where you pinch off that leader stem of the pepper plant when it's young, and it'll force for branching. And then if you look in like the elbow crotch of the branch as it's growing early in its life, and I'll stop doing this probably, I'll do it maybe up to four weeks after transplanting for that first month. And just keep pinching back the stems where you see, you'll see in the crotch of the stem like a sucker, like you would off of a tomato plant. And that'll produce another branch. And you'll just have an abundance then of branching, fruiting branches. Um, and it works so, so well for us. So that's my um, really big tip about getting an abundant harvest off your uh, pepper crop. So tip number one. And similarly, basil. Um, I thought about it because I was thinking about um, harvesting basil. So basil, there is a correct way to harvest from that plant so that it continues to produce. And so you harvest down the stem to where a crotch and branches are that you see little leaf nodes growing. And you pinch down to that and it'll shoot out those more. If you kind of top at the top of the branch, it's not sig signaling to those little leaf nodes, okay, I need to go stay alive and grow some more. So um, always harvest on your way out to a crotch and a branch and where you see little nodes. And um, I tell you what, my daughter-in-law had probably the bushiest basils I've ever seen. Um, and all we did when we set her up was we did um, cardboard on the ground, straight on top of grass, mixed together compost, uh, what'd we do? Compost, peat moss, vermiculite, mixed that together, and then we uh, sprinkled in some all-purpose fertilizer and some bone meal uh, and blood meal. I think that that's it, and then um, she just kept it top dressed with um, all the grass clippings to keep the any weeds down and just to keep the soil moist. Um, and wow, her herb garden has looked more beautiful than anything I've ever grown here. I was so impressed. So that is all of our basil. Now let's go in and let me tell you about the peppers that I'm going to grow. I, I should go grab my garden journal so I know how many I need because right now I just want to plant all the things. So let me go grab that. So like I walk into my garden here and then I turn left and I think we've got our wheat growing here and peppers down the front row. So, and then I do my peppers about every 18 inches so if I had 15 to 20 peppers, I think that that would be good. So the main thing that I want to uh, be able to preserve this year are bell peppers. Um, I don't need a lot of jalapenos. Now I will grow some just so I have them fresh for my salsa making, but I don't need to like really preserve a lot of jalapenos, but I do need to preserve a lot of bell peppers. So for the bell pepper variety, I'm growing from Fairy Morse, the sweet pepper mix from in my gardener, the California, California Wonder. Then we have the purple sweet beauty from Redemption Seeds and the chocolate beauty from in my gardener. So the purple, um, 
The Purple Sweet Beauties, I have bought those from and my gardener before and they did like amazingly well. And I will say I am chancing doing something slightly different this year than I've ever done before. Normally I would soak my pepper seeds. I would just put them in a jar, a, gla a glass, like little bowl of water for like maybe 30 minutes before I planted them. And this year I'm, I'm gonna, I'm chancing not doing that. It's always worked well. And I'm only not doing it because all my little bowls I normally use are being used for something else right now. So hopefully it goes okay. So these are the Purple Sweet Beauties. So again, they go about a quarter inch deep. Here's my little chopstick. They look like nice, nice seeds. You always want your seeds to have good soil contact. Um, and that's kind of why I like to, at least if I'm not watering in my seed starting mix first, I will at least poke, poke my finger down um, and then fill again to make sure that there's not big air pockets and voids in my seed starting um, trays. But at the same time, you don't want it to be overly compacted that there's not good airflow for the roots. So it's just all things that you kind of figure out over time from learning. Something didn't come up, something didn't work well, so you research it a little bit. And these are just little tips I've picked up along the way. Hmm, I'm trying to think, anything else to share with you? Um, I don't really do a whole lot special when I plant my peppers regarding fertilization. I probably should, but I don't. I mean, I'll go out and sprinkle like I just did recently where I sprinkled all-purpose fertilizer and some azomite down in early, mid, early to mid-spring just to prep and refresh the garden beds. Um, and I'll probably two weeks before these go out, I will give the bed again another dressing and probably top dress it with a light layer of compost, maybe two inches. Um, and the compost I just grabbed from my chicken coop. And if I think about it, I may fertilize again when they really start flowering. But that's really it. I don't, I don't do a whole lot more than other than what I swear by is just the, the topping of the peppers and pinching back to get a really branchy bush. All right, so let's do our chocolate beauty next. I don't know that I've ever grown the chocolate beauty. It says it turns red, but I'm not sure if that's just a generic um, description on the back of the packet or if that's true. Maybe they start out kind of brownish and then turn red. And what I'm thinking about, oh, this is a fun experiment. I think I'm gonna try it. I am considering, because I really uh, want to get better at saving my own seeds and I think I'm gonna have more time for that. I'm pretty sure I will this year. That I, I think I may dedicate at least one green stalk to what I'll call my my seed garden, where like I'll plant say um, one of these peppers and I'll plant a tomato, um, things that could cross pollinate that I wouldn't want to save the seeds from because it's I'm not getting what I'm getting and my green stalks are way far away from my garden. Um, so hopefully the cross-pollination chances are, are less. Not to say it couldn't happen, but it would just be less. And let those things uh, purposely age so that I can harvest seed. Even basil, let that go to seed, kale, all kinds of fun things. So I think that that would be a really fun um, a fun use of the green stalk for me. Um, 
Now my other green stock, I usually uh, grow two green stock um, container gardens every year. And the other one I plan on doing like my lettuces and all the quick things that I grab for making lunches and quick dinners and things like that. I have never had, I'm just chatting with you guys while I do this too. I've never had zucchini do well for me in the green stock. I don't know why, it just doesn't. Um, if you guys have been successful and there's a trick or a tip to that, let me know because I would love to be able to have zucchini up by the kitchen um, because that's something that we will grill a lot um, during the summer. It would be nice to just go out there and quick off the back porch and harvest one. But no, no luck so far. Okay, now we are going to do our California Wonders. And then we have our Rainbow Blend. Alrighty, we're back at our Rainbow Sweets. I am not a seed snob at all. I buy whatever seeds are available. So, I mean, if budget is a thing for you, and it is for a lot of folks, um, I know a lot of folks have been very successful with just buying seeds from the dollar store. Um, and one thing about my seed saving idea is if, say one day, seeds aren't available for some reason, I mean, heaven sakes, the, um, shipping industry goes down or some crazy regulation is passed and it makes um, obtaining seeds a little harder. I can't imagine what that would be, but hey, you never know. The world's a crazy place. And if I could teach myself to successfully save my own seeds, it, I just become that more budget conscious as well as um, just a good steward of the food that I grow. So we're preserving it we're eating it, or harvesting it, so we're growing it, preserving it, eating it, and saving seeds from it so we can grow it again. I already do that with my sweet potatoes every year, and a lot of times even my own potatoes in the past. When those are left over, I'll throw those in the garden. You know, they've started sprouting downstairs. I have saved seeds from flowers very regularly, um, like calendula and zinnia in the past. And sunflowers, I save those seeds every year. I have saved pea seeds and have successfully grown those again and saved bean seeds, like green beans, and gr successfully grown those again. But things like tomatoes, peppers, um, zucchini, squashes, all that kind of stuff, I just kind of take it for granted and I grow new from new seed every single year. So I kind of just want to stop taking that for granted and have the opportunity to teach myself a new skill. Another good tip as you're doing this, I should have ta taken notes, is when you're planting your seeds from seed packets that you have, know which ones you need to order again and write that in your journal. Like, okay, I'm completely out, say, of my rainbow mix. I'm not, I've got like six more seeds but that's a fun tip too to know which things you're out of that you need to um, go ahead and put on your next seed order so we're done with all the kind of sweet peppers now we go into the spices and i don't do a lot of crazy but spicy we're kind of a a mild family um to a medium heat so I'm doing jalapenos. These are from So Right Seeds. And I'm doing some Anaheims. And I've never grown Anaheims before. Um, I think the hottest peppers I've ever grown is I grew, um, gosh, what's the cute little orange, little, I can't think of the name now. Anyway, I gave those all to my son-in-law because they're way too hot. I mean, my son, because they're way too hot for us to eat. And um, the name might come to me. Anyway, and then cayennes. 
so we do grow cayennes. Um, I just don't need any this year. Um, I have so much cayenne powder, I'm good. And that's what we use it for, to make our own cayenne powder. And uh, one cayenne is enough. It, they, they produce so many peppers and it goes, oops, I didn't need to do that. It goes really far. And we're almost done. I'm gonna save these last two cells for flowers um, because I know I have more flowers to plant than um, the trays I have set out. So we're gonna be starting some marigolds. No, morning glories. Morning glories here soon. All right, and now we're doing our jalapenos and we're gonna be done. All righty. There they go, just in here underneath the lights. I'm gonna give them a little spritz on the top with some water. I just have this little sprayer thingy that I bought at the dollar store. Most of the soil is pretty moist, but just in case, and just a little spray. Let's make sure that those seeds get nice and damp. Okay, and then we'll put our dome on top. I'll keep that heat in. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so this is just all I have, this greenhouse. And, you know, I'll pull this down. It keeps the heat in because this is sitting over a heat register. So it stays about 80 degrees in there. And that is preferable temperatures 75 to 85 to start peppers so for now though but let me show you guys my beautiful absolutely beautiful little starts of tomatoes they're just coming up let me see oh so exciting i'm gonna get my little camera in here so we have giant crimson popping up hopefully you guys can see that a giant crimson some boxcar willy right there i can see back here the pink ox heart popping up what do we have here boxcar willy boxcar willy i don't know if you guys can see that it's so tiny here i have some pink ox hearts but I'm not seeing um, any Paul Robesons yet. And I'm not, oh yeah, there's my first Cherokee purple. Okay, whew. A Cherokee purple. Oop, we have two Amanas. And yeah. So everything's coming up good so far. I see evidence of everything except the cherries. There's no cherries popping up yet and no Paul Robesons yet. But any day now, they'll come up. And now, all I do, I've been doing, it's been about four days, I think, since I planted them, um, is I make sure that the surface of the soil is staying moist. So once a day, I'll check them. If it looks kind of like lightened up and dried, I'll just drizzle like you saw me do with the peppers and keep that soil moist. Once they're all pretty much popped up through, I'll stop top watering. I'll take the humidity dome off and we'll start just watering from the bottom. But I will need to raise these guys up and get it closer to the light so that they don't get leggy on me. Okay, I just got them lifted up off camera. So all I did was took an upside down seed tray and put it upside down. And it's about two inches, maybe three inches. Actually, the seeds are lower. So if I could, I wonder if I can get something else under there. I don't know if I have anything quite 
low enough. I would prefer to have it like right there touching the light. But like always, I like to sh share with you guys how everything is doing. So broccoli is looking great. And we have our cabbages looking absolutely so healthy. And our red cabbages looking phenomenal. And I've got two trays of celery up here that's looking so, so good, really good. And then one more thing to show you. Come on, focus on me. All of my sweet potatoes. So lots and lots of healthy root development on our sweet potato slips. And I've got one quart jar, the pint jar, this is like a bunch you'll see. Hopefully it'll come up. Yeah, like just the beginning of roots growing. So, so many in here that have been recently harvested. Same thing for this one. You can see just the beginnings of baby roots growing on this bundle. But if you come over to some of our early ones, look at those. Great roots. And I'm going to, I think I, I had to toss two more sweet potatoes. So I did have to toss two more sweet potatoes today because they were just done. Um, and I have four more that I'm just gonna keep harvesting from until they give up. Because um, even if I don't uh, need them, I'll have some to share. So that's another thing that my daughter-in-law was interested in growing. So we have lots, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six jelly jars, basically jam-packed full of sweet potatoes. And I think there's like close to nine slips, if not more, in every jar. So I think I may not get my original goal of like 100, 120, I think I wanted, but I'll have way more than I've ever planted before. So thanks guys for coming with me, planting more seeds. We're one step closer to gardening. And if you missed it, we just planted our peas out in the garden. So the peas are out there. I probably need to water those today. We had a really good rain two days in a row after that, but I should probably go check them and see if they need to be watered today. Happy growing and gardening where you guys are, and I'll see you on the next video.